Welcome to another one of our profiles of Teachers of the Year. Here we have with us Daphne Cagle, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sac City School District. Daphne, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, first tell us a little bit about yourself, where you teach, and what grade you teach. Well, I teach at Sutter Middle School. I teach one period of our reading intervention program, and mostly I teach communicatively handicapped students. That is kids with, uh, it's a special education class. It's kids with normal intelligence, but low in language processing. And um, many of them are, some of them are autistic, and anyhow, we have a really good time. Now, how long have you been teaching uh, this type of student? Um, eight years. I was, my background is in speech pathology, and so I was an itinerant speech therapist. And then my principal tripped me walking down the hall one day and asked me to take this communicatively handicapped special day class, and so I did, and it's been eight years. Oh, well. What does it mean for you to be considered as a teacher of the year? What does that mean to you? Well, it's really surprising. You know, I mean, I know I work really hard and I stay late and all those things that people do, but there's so many really wonderful teachers and it, it, but it, it's kind of a validation of that you, that the techniques that you are using have worked. And I was most excited because when they called me to tell me that I'd won, the students, the look on the kids' face, the special ed students who've never really been validated for quite a few things, the look on their faces, that was what I'll remember about Teacher of the Year. Well, what kind of rewards do you have, uh, do you get for teaching uh, special students? Well, I have a wonderful class and they're really fun and they, they are excited about learning and they're really excellent. But one of the other rewards are, you know, in the state of California, students have to take the high school exit exam. And we always were really worried about the special education students passing, but my students all pass. And when I get that email or that phone call saying that, you know, another student or group of students has passed either a part of it or the whole thing, that's, the, uh, that's a great reward. So you find it rewarding overall just to, to be able to, to make contact with these students and really see them achieve. And the parents. The par I work with a really gr good group of parents, and I've really worked hard to say this is the best day of the best year. And every day I walk into my classroom, I think, wow, what kind of fun are we going to have today? Or what, what new things are we going to um, learn? And so I am really excited about each day in my classroom, and working with the students and the parents are, are a very great re reward. What are some of the biggest challenges as a teacher that you see in the classroom? Well. My students all have different learning styles. As a special ed teacher, I have to deal with a million different ways of learning. And so the idea is to make the material comprehensible. And sometimes you're teaching really difficult material like the Constitution in eighth grade history. And you know that's a pretty hard concept to understand, you know, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and the government. And you're trying to make this incomprehensible material comprehensible to these kids with, with special learning needs. And so you have to do a lot of like hands-on or role plays or anything you can to make this material come alive because it isn't the kind of material that's very concrete for students. So you really have to kind of dig deep into a bag of tricks in order to find ways to connect with each student because each student is different. And, and I do have a lot. I go to a million in-services and I have a million bags of tricks. Well, what do you find uh, really is the most rewarding thing about being a teacher? Um, the chance to work with parents and kids and see them succeed. You know, you're, um, I, I'm at, I, my students are, here's a student who doesn't know how to do something. And every day I get to see them learn how to do whatever it was that I was teaching. If it's a math problem or a particularly writing, how to write an essay of some kind, or maybe it's a history concept that we're teaching. And the look on their face when they've got it, when actually, and it was something that you did, something that they walked in the room not knowing, but you're the one that actually got them to learn this particular concept or idea, that's really thrilling. Do you find that the environment involving special education students or students with special needs, that the environment is changing in education and that we're seeing uh, more help out there, more emphasis uh, for these students? Well, with standards now, you have to do the best to meet those expectations. You know, when they first came out with standards in the high school exit exam, I thought, oh no, how are we ever going to do this? This is impossible. But I mobilized my resources, called up all my friends, my friend that I send the kid to in, in, high, in the high school program, and said, we got to get together and we got to come up with some strategies. And then I attended a whole bunch of in-services to try to learn those strategies. And I think we have some really good 
special education teachers. The problem is we um, lose a lot of our teachers in the first five years of teaching. And so I um, support new teachers as a BITSA support provider. And one of the things I'm really about is to try to do what I can to make sure that the next generation of teachers doesn't quit before they can get the reward. Do you find, though, that in the classroom now, in education overall, that students with special needs are getting more attention? I think so. I mean, I think there more is expected of them. When I first started teaching, the expectations were so low. You know, you couldn't, you know, kids didn't really have much expectations for learning. But now, with the new um, expectations and the standards, we are expecting a lot more of our kids. And you know what? They can do it. You find that, it, it, that it's easy to inspire these students? And it, what do you do to inspire them? Well, I think one of the things I do is to try to treat them, you know, have a kind of a cooperative classroom and to treat my students um, with respect and to um, instill in them, you know, a love of learning. And I think that my students, some of them are kind of the walking wounded. They, they've been very uncomfortable with school and they maybe haven't had the best successful experience. But my job is to make every day a great experience and to make the kids um, you know, happy to be there and to have fun while we're learning stuff. So you feel that a lot of these kids have really been ignored or didn't really get the attention they, they needed, but you're finding that just that little bit of extra attention really makes a difference for them. Yes, yes. And I think a lot of times the students really, really want to learn the material and such, and, but some of them have been discouraged. And it's not teaching. Some of them have had excellent teaching, but some of them have been, you know, trying to deal with your disability has made them somewhat discouraged. And so we try to talk a lot about individual differences and how a, what a student can do to succeed and what their learning style is and what they need to have a successful experience. And once a student who uh, is in special education starts seeing success, how do you see that student changing? Well, um, I have a student in my class this year, well, she won't be in next year, who never really talked at school. I mean, she was very shy and withdrawn and really didn't talk in elementary school. But this year she ran for a student council office, you know, and gave a speech in front of 600 people, which would have scared the bejeebers out of me when I was in junior high school. But, but she did it, and she did it successfully, and it was a great speech. She didn't win, but the self-esteem that that built from having that experience and going through that, that was really, really awe-inspiring to watch. And so I think um, you have to, you know, get with the students and inspire what they're doing and, you know, kind of look at each individual and see where they need to go and what what, how, what it takes to achieve the success. Because each student has kind of a different uh, mechanism where they find success, is that correct? Right, and it's the comfort part of school. You know, curriculum is fine and we know a lot of techniques, but I think sometimes these kids have, haven't felt very comfortable because maybe they weren't the popular kid who has a lot of friends. Well, let me ask you this, how long, how long have you been teaching? Well, I've been in Sac City 27 and a half years and Louisiana for two years. So I guess a little over 29 years. Okay, so that's a long time. You're a career teacher. What would you say to uh, other young people out there who are considering teaching as a career? What would you say to inspire them? That the rewards are many, that you get rewards from teaching that you may not get from other professions. I've had teachers that have changed my life, and I know that a lot of the people that are listening to this interview will have had teachers that have changed their life. and the fact to change someone's life, to directly make them feel more self-confident or more academically um, able to do things, that is something you just can't get from any profession that you might enter. So teaching is really a wonderful career. Now, did you have a special teacher who inspired you? Yes, I've had several, but the one that I wanted to tell you about is I had a teacher named Mrs. Tubes. When I was born, I was born where I, um, I couldn't see very well. I don't have very good vision. and. Um, when I was young, my parents thought, oh no, she's never going to amount to anything. But she told my parents that I was really smart and that I would go to college. And just by her believing in me made me believe in myself. And so to have the power to change somebody's self-image, that's really awe-inspiring. Oh, okay. And that's what she did for me. Well, your story is inspiring as well. Thank you for joining us very much. This is Daphne Cagle, one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us.